As you're aware, we've been traveling through the book of Exodus on Sunday nights. Just to recap briefly, the book of Exodus is divided into two sections. Section number one is chapter 18, and it's all about the redemption of God's people out of the land of Egypt. And then you transition to section 2, which is chapters 19 through 40, which is all about the revelation of God's people at Mount Sinai. We are in the first section. We've looked at last week of the the plague of of the water turning into blood. And this is the beginning of a series of ten plagues that God thunders down upon the land of Egypt, all because they were disobedient to the Word of God. And as we come to this passage of Scripture, chapter 8, I just want to remind you today of verse number 10. I like this verse. This is after Pharaoh is having a discussion with Moses and Aaron. We did not read this verse, but this is where I get my sermon title from. It says, and he said, speaking of Pharaoh, Pharaoh, uh, well, Moses and Aaron asked Pharaoh when they are going to be able to go and sacrifice to their God. And he says, tomorrow. And then uh, Moses replies, be it according to thy word that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God. As I read verse number 10, I wrote down this thought. There is no God like our God. There is no God like our God. If you walk away with anything this evening from this passage of Scripture, from Exodus chapter 8, I want you to know this. There is no God like Jesus Christ. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning. He is the ending. He is our Redeemer. He is our Deliverer. He is our Savior. He is the one true resurrected King of kings sitting at the right hand of God the Father. And He is the one this verse is speaking of. There is no other God like Jesus Christ. Now, as we come into this passage, I want you to notice in chapter 7, the plague of the water turning into blood, which I believe it actually turned into blood. I do not think that it was, was any kind of red dye. It was actual blood. And we looked into that last week. But, but this week, we find three plagues that are mentioned. In verses 1 through 15, we have the plague of frogs. In verses 16 through 19, we have the plague of lice. And in verses 20 through 32, we have the plague of flies. These are some interesting diseases and plagues that God thunders down upon the Egyptians. But remember, last week when we looked at the Nile River, we discovered that the reason why God poured out His judgment upon the Nile River and the water was because they worshipped the Nile River as a God. And as we come into this passage of Scripture, we find that, that, the, that the people of Egypt, we, they believed in many gods, so they were polytheistic. In fact, I was, some Jehovah's Witnesses came to my house yesterday. I've been after them uh, to come to my house and to give me a leather-bound New World Translation, a 2013 edition, brand new. They brought it to me yesterday, and I had an awesome conversation with them. Question after question, I began to ask them, and, and, and they were ruffled. I ruffled their feathers, thank the Lord. I was not interested in debating them. I was interested in hearing what they had to say about many passages of Scripture. But uh, I say that because as we come into here, we find that, that this book of the Bible discusses plagues. And, and when we disobey the Word of God, when we tamper with the Word of God, when we do not hearken to the Word of God... God sends His judgment upon us. The land of Egypt was worshiping a false god. And by the way, the Kingdom Hall, they worship a false god. I asked them, I said yesterday, um, uh, I began to ask them about John 1.1. And I said, well, uh, let me ask you this, fellas. Was Jesus God? I began to ask them questions. What, what separates you from mainstream Christianity? And so the first thing they talked about was the Trinity. How they did not believe in the triune God. And so I said, well, well, that's interesting. How do you handle this verse in John 1, 1? And by the way, your version says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was a God. And just for the record, for what it's worth, there is no Greek manuscript underneath God, the Son on this earth that contains the rendering of that phrase. And I could have brought out my Greek New Testament and translated it for them right then and there, but I didn't do that. Um, but I share with them how there's none ever out there. And so they begin to share how, well, well, believe, we believe that, that there's one God, and that's Jehovah. He is the God of gods. Well, I was like, well, what, what do you do with John 1, 1, where it says Jesus was a God in your translation? Well, we believe that he, he, he was a God. I was like, well, how do you handle a verse like 1 John 5, 7, where it says the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, these are one. And they said, well, they're just one in agreement. Yeah, whatever. 
You know, you can believe whatever you want to believe about the Bible. You can take the Bible. You can twist it however you want to. But please make no mistakes about it. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father are one God. I began to I share with them in Acts chapter 5. I said, well, let me remind you of Ananias and Sapphira. The Bible says that they lied on, against the Holy Spirit. And then the very next verse says that they lied unto God. I said, how do you handle that verse where the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is God? And they said, well... Well, actually, uh, it just means that the Spirit of God came upon them. You know, whatever. You know, you believe whatever you want to believe. I'm going to take the Word of God as it is, as it says, and there's only one God. So I asked them, are you polytheistic or monotheistic? And if you don't know what that means, do you believe? I'm asking them, do you believe in one God or do you believe in many gods? And they said, well, well, well we, believe in, we believe in one God, Jehovah. And all these other people are underneath them. I'm like, okay. And they said, Jesus, to us, was like a God. Yeah, to each his own, right? So the next time a Jehovah Witness knocks on your door, listen, if you don't know what you're talking about, please send them away. Don't talk to them. Because they've converted a whole lot of Baptists out there. I say all that to say this. There is no God like our God, and his name is Jesus Christ. I'm not going to go through all the verses, but I could just stay in the gospel. I could just take one book with you, and in nearly every chapter in the gospel of John, I could share with you why Jesus is God in the flesh. <laughs> I, I went over to a verse. I said, well, hey, how about 1 Timothy chapter 3? It says God was manifest in the flesh. How do you handle that? How do you handle that? These are passages of Scripture. I asked them. I said, how do you handle Philippians chapter 2 where it says that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God? How do you handle that verse in the gospel of John where the Bible says that he that has seen Jesus has seen the Father? How do you handle that? How do you handle that verse where the Bible said, where Jesus said, I and the Father are one? So I had an interesting conversation with these fellows yesterday. And they were not their, you know, their young elders. These are their, some of their senior saints, if you want to call them saints. But I just share all that with you to let you know that there's people out there who are going to try to skew your, ver your, your view of the Word of God. And that's why you've got to understand the Word of God. And the way I like to view the Kingdom Hall and I say this respectfully, is a bunch of lay people who have no idea how to interpret the Bible, and they pull verses out of context to try to teach whatever they want. So please, I'm not saying you need to go off and get a degree or all that stuff, but all I'm going to say is this, you need to keep the context of Scripture in mind. And the context of the book of Exodus is this, there is one God, and His name is is Jehovah. In other words, his name is Jesus Christ. And in this verse, in these verses of Exodus chapter 8, we find that God is pouring out his judgment upon the Egyptians, upon the frogs, and upon the lice, and upon the flies, because these were symbols used in a worshipful manner towards false gods. I wrote down a key statement that that really, if you, if you read this chapter and you study it over and over uh, for yourself, you're going to find out that in verse 15, in verse number 19, and then the very last verse, 32, the Bible speaks about how Pharaoh hardened his heart and did not hearken to the word of God. So I just wrote down this key statement that I like to summarize this chapter and summarize the entirety of my sermon. Hearkening not to God's word produces a hardening towards God's word. Hearkening not to God's word produces a hardening towards God's word. You find out there are a lot of people who are going to say that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. And, and I could see where you might be able to pull a verse or two out of context and say that God was the one who hardened his heart. But when you study all of the verses about Pharaoh's heart that was hardened, you find out that God makes a prediction about Pharaoh's heart is going to be hardened on the base on the fact that Pharaoh continually hardens his heart towards God's word. And the more we callous our heart to the word of God, the more we will continually reject the word of God and these people did just that and Pharaoh was so hardened towards God that he ended up dying in the Red Sea now I'm sure you're asking yourself a question why should we hearken to God's word well first of all because it is God's word and I'm talking about the complete inspired inerrant infallible word of the living God I mean, in our English language, we have the Word of God. We have a book that has been tested by scholarship, but it remains true because it's from the Savior's mouth, from heaven. This book of the Bible, this book of the Bible, the book of Exodus, it reveals to us Jesus Christ in many different aspects and facets. We find here in this book, this chapter, that Jesus Christ 
is our God in verse number 10. And if you've never trusted Him as your God and made Him your Lord and Savior, you need to do so before it's eternally too late. Hearken to God's Word. Why? First of all, if you don't hearken to God's Word, you're going to get His judgment of eternal damnation. And nobody in their right mind wants to spend eternity separated from God in a devil's hell. And if you do, well, more power to you. I like what one old preacher, one old, one old preacher that was preaching the paints off the walls one Sunday, he said, the fire in hell has been canceled due to the, excuse me, the party in hell has been canceled due to the fire. <laughs> a lot of people think it's going to be a big old party in hell, but I'm, I'm, I remind you that the flames of hell are so hard, hot that you can't see them. That's why the Bible speaks about how it's an outer darkness. You can't see there of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And by the way, uh, another thing that separates us from Jehovah Witnesses is they do not believe in a, in a, a eternal burning lake of fire. And they're, they're, they were sharing with me that how could a loving God allow somebody to burn for all eternity? I'm going to say something today that's going to rock your world, but it's true. Not everything, that is, uh, not everything that is logical is theological. Let me let that sink in. Not everything that is logical is theological. In our finite mind, the way we try to create God and to make it logic and more logical in our minds is to say, well, a loving God would not send somebody to a devil's hell. Wrong. Because the Word of God says otherwise. And who are we... To, de to define how God describes His characteristics. God reveals in His Word that if you do not bow your knee to Him and confess with your mouth that, you, that He is Lord, then you will spend eternity with a hardened heart receiving the wrath. I'm speaking of the judgment of God. So please, don't harden your heart towards God. Hearken to His Word. So that's the main reason why, but I want to share with you some reasons why we should hearken to God's Word. And, and my sermon outline is not meant to be funny, uh, but I guess you could see it could be a little humorous. Uh, but, but it's just straight from the passage here. In verses 1 through 15, I wrote down this. Hearken to God's Word because He is greater than frogs. <laughs> hearken to God's Word because He is greater than frogs. I want you to know that in verses 1 through 15, we find that God is pouring out His judgment upon Egypt based upon frogs. Now, the goddess of birth that the Egyptians worshipped, we are told by biblical historians, they, it was, a, it was a, a statue that they made, and the head of the statue, you know what it had as a head? It had a head as a frog. Now, I don't know about you, but if, but if I uh, walked into a, a, a temple, and I saw a, a beautiful statue with a frog's head, I would not be caught dead bowing down and worshipping that God. Verse 1 and through 4, as we read, it talks about how God asked Pharaoh, excuse me, Moses and Aaron to go into Pharaoh and speak about, let my people go. This is the third time, by the way, that they would do that. And he refused. And he says that if you refuse, I'm going to smite the land with frogs. Now, the other day I was opening up the church. Uh, I, got, I generally get here on Sunday mornings about an hour before the service starts. So I got here about 9 o'clock and I, I go through the basement door to unlock that so I don't have to walk down the steps and then walk back up. You know, it's just smarter. Work smarter, not harder, right? And so I, I get in and I open up the door and there was, these, there was a little toad down there. It's a little old slimy toad. And I'm not about to pick up that toad. So I had the door open and I kicked the toad out the door. And that toad crawled right back into the, into the base. I said, well, I'll tell you what. If you want to be in here that bad, you can die in here all you want to. And so anyways, uh, can you imagine ladies opening up your cabinets and having frogs jump out at you? Ladies, can you imagine opening up your kitchen supplies and equipments, your, your, your baking bowls and, and your pans and your pots and, and frogs jumping out at you? Can you imagine opening up your refrigerator doors and frogs jumping out at you? Can you imagine going into your basement and opening up your big freezer and frogs jumping out at you? Can you imagine crawling in your bed and then sleeping with...